As the Christian world observes the solemnity of Good Friday, a day of reflection on sacrifice and redemption, the narrative surrounding the British royal family and the media's portrayal takes on a poignant resonance. Today more than ever, themes of forgiveness, understanding, and the quest for truth beckon us to look beyond the surface of sensational headlines and seek a deeper understanding of the stories that shape our perceptions. In this context, the UK press ongoing battle against those who challenge its narratives, particularly around the Sussex squad, and our support for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan, mirrors broader themes of conflict and reconciliation. The Sun a tabloid often at the forefront of this contentious relationship, allegedly finds a new ally in the palace, as evidenced by Victoria Newton, editor-in-chief, who claimed contact with the palace to help shift narratives just a few days ago. This revelation underscores a complex interplay of power, media, and the influence of institutional narratives. Christopher Bose, featured in the docuseries of Harry and Meghan on Netflix, has become a target for the UK tabloid press, accused without basis of leading attacks against Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales. This vilification campaign highlights a disturbing trend of scapegoating individuals who dare to question the status quo, turning the media landscape into a proverbial wonderland, where truth and fiction blurs, where up is down and down is, well, wherever. On this Good Friday, as we ponder the virtues of sacrifice and redemption, let us also consider the power of narrative and the responsibility that comes with it. The Sussex Squad, a global community of supporters advocated for Prince Harry and Meghan, embodies the spirit of collective action for positive change. Our efforts, from charitable initiatives to countering racist, sexist, negative media coverage, reflect a commitment to values that resonate deeply with the theme of today's observance, justice, compassion, and the relentless pursuit of the truth. This Good Friday, let us reflect on the narratives that divide us and the potential for understanding and reconciliation that lies within our shared humanity. In this swirling vertex of media narratives and public discourse, may we find the grace to seek truth, extend forgiveness, and embrace the transformative power of love and solidarity. Majesty's Sussex Report, on this sacred day, invites us to view the saga of the Sussexes and all of us their supporters, not merely as a media spectacle for the tabloid press to deflect their own responsibilities and guilt and narrative, but as a call to engage with deeper questions of morality, justice, and the common good. As we navigate the complexities of media influence and public perception, let us do so with a commitment to integrity, compassion, and the unwavering pursuit of truth. That's what the Sussex Squad is all about. Don't try and change it. Miss Newton
thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to say thank you to those who have given much to you and done much for you, whether that's your parents, maybe a sibling, perhaps an aunt or an uncle, maybe a friend, or perhaps a stranger. Say thank you. Don't forget. Please consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber yet. Remember to turn the notification on if you are a subscriber. Click on that thumb up emoji. It tells the algorithm that uh, you like the content and that you're interacting. So leave a comment also. However, if your comment is not appropriate for this channel, it will be deleted. So now that we understand each other, thank you once again for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. I also want to mention, if you haven't noticed, for those who are new around here, this channel supports the mission and vision of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan. Segments of the UK press have decided to declare war or maybe it's a battle or maybe it's a fight. Listen, I, I'm certainly not interested in it. On those challenging their disinformation campaign and at the center, they have decided to target the Sussex squad. The Sun, a tabloid newspaper, and these days it seems almost like the palace's new favorite propaganda wing, allegedly. Evidenced by Victoria Newton, editor-in-chief, who a few days ago on a Sunday show said that she was in contact with the palace and helped them change the narrative because she was very upset as to how the princess was being portrayed or targeted. Really moved the day of the Photoshop fail when the whole world was attacking her I just thought it was outrageous. This poor woman was clearly ill and was so desperate that she, she tweaked a photo, minor tweaks, to make it look a little bit better. So that's why I did that front page and it was really important. It then changed the narrative. A lot of the rest of the media then started saying, back off, Kate. Mm. So I don't accept uh, what you said earlier. Um, in terms of reporting the fact that they went out to the Windsor farm shop uh, a few days later, they knew that if they went out there in, in public, mingled with members of the public, they would be seen and potentially photographed because everyone's got a camera phone now. And that's how it happened. It wasn't a photographer. It was a camera phone. And of course, I was in discussions with the palace all along with that. Really now, a couple of things. I thought the palace never complained and never explained anything. So I guess I've got that one wrong. And also, who exactly was targeting the princess? It certainly wasn't a Sussex squad or a true Sussex squad. Because for your information and for those out there who keep saying, oh, the Sussex squad is running for the hills and hiding, accounts have been blocked and accounts have been deleted and accounts have been gone private. Number one, if accounts have gone private, that's because there's been quite a lot of bullying. And sometimes, you know, you had enough of it. And if people have deleted or done certain things, here is something. Anyone can pretend to be Sussex Squad. Anyone including the people who conveniently it's in their favor to accuse the Sussex squad of saying things that we didn't say. Now the tabloid or the tabloid rag, as some may like to refer to it as, has decided that the people that were concerned about the media disinformation surrounding Kate's disappearance and were calling out for proof that she was well, doing okay, were actually 
attacking Kate. And at the center of this again, they've placed the Sussex squad. You know, again, I keep thinking about the Wonderland, where up is down and right is forward and blue is green. So, before I continue with all of this, you, you folks do know who Victoria Newton is. If you don't, let me remind you. Victoria Newton is the editor-in-chief of The Sun, who allowed, approved, was okay with Jeremy Clarkson's vile, misogynistic, hateful, perhaps his sexual fantasy to be published in her newspaper owned by Rupert Murdoch. Now, uh, I'm not going to repeat the things that he wrote, but how can you compare what Jeremy Clarkson wrote to the Sussex Quad, of my knowledge, asking, where is Kate? Because it all seems a little bit strange and weird. Was she in the hospital? Was she not? There was conflicting information. Now, unlike the derangers and unlike the hateful bunch of these people, look, the majority of us, we just want to support Harry and Meghan and whatever the Sussex do. If you folks stop talking about them and stop harassing them and telling lies, inventing these creative stories that if you wait the time, none of it is proven as a factual or truth. If you were to just dedicate your time, your energy to the other royals, there, there, there's a bunch of them, go ahead. Then we wouldn't have to worry about Kate. Because you see, we have noticed a pattern and we have noticed that misinformation is quite hmm, regular. So when, you know, weird and odd and it doesn't add up information, by the way, started by a lot of you folks, the tabloid, about Princess Kate, we started to wonder also, well... Where is she? Because you see, as much as all these awful things and hateful things have been done and misinformation, mischaracterization, we're still good people. We know she's a mother of three children. And we wanted no harm to her. So we questioned and we had to write the question to ask, is she okay? <laughs> and now you want to paint us as the what? Now, let me clarify a couple of things as to what the Sussex Squad is. So that Victoria can't define who we are or the other folks on social media trying to define who we are. Let me help you. Now, this is my definition. The Sussex Squad is a global community of supporters and fans of Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. This informal, let me repeat that, informal group emerged on social media platforms following the couple's engagement in 2017 and has grown significantly since then. Members of the Sussex Squad, which I am 
part of, are known for their active presence on platforms like Twitter, now known as X, Instagram, YouTube, and some of us have blogs, where we share news, express support, and defend Harry and Meghan against criticism and false negative media coverage. That's what we do. The Sussex Squad began to form around the time of Harry and Meghan's engagement and wedding, as public interest in the couple surged. Their relationship, marked by its break from traditional royal norms, including Meghan's background as an American actress and mix biracial person, drew both admiration and scrutiny from the public and media alike. Supporters of the couple, who appreciated their modern approach to royal duties and social issues, began to connect over social media to share positive narratives in contrast to the often critical, race-baiting, racist coverage found in certain media outlets. The Sussex Squad is notable for more than just vocal supporters of Harry and Meghan. We have also organized charity campaigns and fundraising activities in the couple's honor. These have included social media-driven initiatives made <laughs> at promoting the charitable causes supported by the Duke and the Duchess. We've done that through hashtags and online campaigns. We have managed to raise, oh man, a significant sum for charities and bring attention to issues ranging from mental health to the dangers in, in, in social media, women's rights. A significant aspect of the Sussex Squad activities involve countering unfair or negative media treatment of Harry and Meghan. This has included engaging with journalists and media outlets on social media, debunking false stories and highlighting positive news about the couple. Our efforts aim to create a more balanced narrative and support the Sussexes through the challenges they faced in the public eye. The Sussex Squad has fostered a sense of community among its members, many of whom view the support of Harry and Meghan as aligned with broader values such as social justice, feminism, and racial equality. This community aspect has been a key factor in the group's cohesion and continued activity. The Sussex Quad represents a sort of part of this phenomenon in digital, the digital age, where fans and supporters of public figures can mobilize globally to offer support engage in charitable activities, and influence the public discourse. Our formation and activities underscore the powerful role of social media in shaping narratives and creating communities around shared interests and values. Now, we don't have a leader, so don't try and assign us one. We come from all facets of life, different backgrounds, perhaps even different ideologies. We don't always agree on everything, and that's okay. Now, we don't intentionally go out to attack anyone. No. Leave us alone. Leave Harry and Meghan alone. Let them do their thing. If you do that, Right? 
if you stop with the harassment and the abuse of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, then by all the means. So this is who we are. This is what the Sussex Squad does. Now, in regards to Christopher Boozy, listen, if you want to sign him as our leader, why not? That's your prerogative. And to our brother at Sussex Squad Family TV, Brian, I think you should leave that guy alone. All he's doing is pointing out the discrepancies and the continued abuse that you folks continue to do. Now, in regards to the sun, because I've, I've done some research, right? We have, what's that thing called again? Receipts? Yeah, we've got those. The Sun newspaper in the UK has published numerous negative headlines about Meghan Markle. According to one analysis that I looked at, between May 2018 and January 2020, now look, I've gone way back, okay? It hasn't stopped. 43% of the 843 articles about Megan in 14 UK printed newspapers were negative while 8% of Kate were slightly negative. So, you mean to tell me that Megan is that awful? That bad? Now, since I said I had receipts, see, I'm not the only one who has them. We all do. So here's an example.
That is not even the tip of the iceberg. I've put there just the ones I was willing to even look at. They get worse, even violent, disgusting. So for the fellow, the gentleman, who said Megan and Harry should ask for forgiveness for the lady who keeps saying that the Sussex squad or people on this side have insulted, demeaned, and whatever else you think we have said to Kate Middleton, I say this to you, to all of you, on this day, Good Friday, which holds profound significance in the Christian faith for its theme of sacrifice, forgiveness, and renewal, we find it appropriate to address a pressing matter that transcends the bounds of individual belief and touches upon the universal values of integrity and compassion. It has come to the collective conscious that a relentless scrutiny and disparaging portrayal of Megan, Duchess of Sussex, in various articles, headlines, and narratives has cast a shadow over the ethos of respectful journalism. The intense scrutiny, disproportionate and devoid of empathy, not only affects the subject of such narratives, but also reflects on the fabric of our society and the principles we uphold. We observe that coverage has crossed the line into personal attacks and baseless speculation, demonstrating a departure from the impartiality and fairness that are the pillars of journalistic integrity. It is on days like today, Good Friday, that we are reminded of the power of humility and the need for atonement. In the spirit of Good Friday, a day of reconciliation and forgiveness, we call upon you to take a moment to reflect on the impact that your narratives can have on individuals, their families, and the broader community. We urge you to consider a course that seeks to repair and make amends for the distress caused, consciously or unconsciously. This is an opportune moment to embrace the values of understanding and grace that Good Friday epitomizes, to acknowledge where we may have faltered, and to announce a commitment to a future where the dignity of every individual is respected. It is a time for renewal, and as such, we respectfully request that an announcement be made, including a willingness to embark on a path of positive change, one that leads to a media environment characterized by empathy, fairness, and a celebration of diversity. That is my hope. That is my hope. So, stop asking because you have no ground to stand on. You have no values, you have no moral ground to stand on.
gates of peace be scattered birthing trees whose oh, shade gives us rest may the seeds of peace be scattered birthing Shade gives us rest. May the seeds of peace be scattered. Birthing trees whose shade gives us rest. May the seeds of peace. Shade gives us rest.